Recently I was watching a Formula One documentary and I saw a nice timetable on the wall of one of the teams and this timetable have helped the team to plan better all the tasks they need to do so they, that they have the car ready for the race. And I thought that I would make something similar for us uh, because there are still a lot of things which needs to be done and I don't want to forget about anything. So uh, I made it, it's behind me on the table and uh, let's check it out. So there are still 12 weeks available. So I split the table into 12 columns. So all the tasks for one week are in one column. The most problematic part so far seems to be the anode cup which holds the stack of the digits. And uh, the most difficult part on this is the, is the forming itself. So my initial plan was to hire a local company to make a pressing die and they would take a metal sheet and form the anode cup. It would be a full cup. And uh, once this would be formed, uh, I would take it to another company which would uh, use a 3D laser which is used for cutting a profiles like tubing or square tubing and uh, they would cut the shape on the, on the rim of the anode cup. I, I think it would be possible to make a jig that would hold the anode cup in the 3D laser and the laser would cut one by one these parts. Uh, it would be quite laborious and maybe this is also the reason why I was refused in the companies having these lasers. So this turned out to be a dead way. I'm taking a different approach. We will take a sheet metal and using a fiber laser we will cut uh, like a pre-cut shape on the sheet metal. And then we will take these pre-cut parts and we will use them on a, on a forming die which will, using a press, we will form the final shape. We will not need to do any uh, final laser cutting on the, on the edges or anything. It will be laser cut uh, from the flat metal, which is a standard process. And then once this is done, it will be formed on a, on a press die. I have here first two parts. When you look at the shape, it doesn't look much encouraging, but this is just the first test of uh, the radius uh, that we can use for, for bending. On this test, we were able to decide about thickness of the metal because we want to use as thin metal as possible, but uh, not losing the, 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 the structural strength. So uh, now we know that 0.1 millimeter is too thin. It's, it's really very springy and not, not rigid enough and 0.2 millimeters thickness will be will be perfect. Still a little bit too too soft but uh, it will be possible to reinforce it by by pressing some like circles in it and it will it will work well. We don't want to use much thick metal because the more metal you have the more gases can be evolved during operation of the tube spoiling the, uh, the, the gas inside and also the thicker metal the heavier the part is the tube could be damaged during the shipment because the the heavier part has like higher momentum and it, it could it could damage the internal system. So this was a test with stainless steel. Uh, the final parts will be made of deep drawing steel called DC01. And uh, the reason why we used stainless steel was because uh, this technology is, is readily available for us here. Uh, it's, uh, it's used, this metal is used for making uh, stencils for application of solder paste on a PC board. So uh, there's a company printed CZ. Uh, they have a laser which is able to cut shapes out of a stainless steel and they have the uh, this thickness of steel in stock so we just asked them to make this shape for us so we can test uh, the first like a version of the of the die for the press. So this column is what I'm planning to do from 13 to 19 of July. And uh, the thing which relates to the anode cup is the surface finish of the, of the anode cup. And uh, I need to test, because I'm planning to do blackening on it, we need to have nice black contrastive layer so that you can better read the, the digits so that you don't see the reflected light from the cathodes on the, on the back side of the tube. And uh, I'm planning to do uh, blackening because it will be made of regular steel. Uh, we can do blackening on it. And this black layer consists of oxide of iron. So I need to test whether the oxide is, is good for vacuum, whether it's 
able to be pumped and it doesn't make any like changes of the color or spoiling the vacuum or anything like this. Uh, it should be okay, but we need to be we need to be sure. So this week I'm planning this test. Uh, as for the other other tasks for this week, uh, we are waiting because Radim was working intensively on the on design of the electronics. We are waiting for all three different PC boards uh, coming this week. So uh, we'll receive the base PCBs, which will be used inside the socket of the tube. Uh, there will be one difference to our regular tube. We have uh, uh, just 11 pins going out of the tube and uh, for this big tube we will need to have some like structural support. So uh, because the tube is heavy, uh, it will there will be a screw that will hold this tube in place so that it doesn't bend down by its weight. We are waiting for slave PCBs. There will be one PCB for each tube mounted on the board and this on the like on the big wall and uh, these PCBs will serve as a support and socket for the tubes. No, no, we will receive 20 of them this week and uh, we need to make sure that they work once we know we'll order them next next week. Yeah, here we will need 121 of them. Uh, the master PCB, uh, this will be the master board which will be sending the commands to all the slave boards. So this is also coming this week. This week we will receive also the remaining parts for the, for the rack with the oxygen concentrators. So Lukash will finish this project and uh, we'll start testing whether it's able to deliver the en enough of the oxygen. Another project is graphical design of digits and the anode grid. I'm getting a big help here from Tomasz Miller, who is a freelance graphic designer. This tube is designed from scratch, so it's a unique opportunity to introduce some changes to the regular traditional design of the Nixie tubes. And one of them is, and one of the places that we can change is the is the shape of the digits. So uh, we will use custom font and I want to have it a little bit different. Uh, all the regular Nixie tubes use just one line, like just, just a line for making the shape of the tube. And uh, for our tube, I want to use something different, maybe uh, like contours or like two lines close to each other. So far we have this shape, it's not final, but we will order this shape for testing. We will see if it works and how it looks. So this is the version what we have right now. And we want to finalize the whole set together with the anode this week. Just quickly the other tasks. This week we are receiving the remaining ceramic parts. These are the ceramic tubes uh, which will hold the stem in place. I will have to design a jig for making the support for the stem out of the stainless steel wires. These are the circular parts and uh, the rods. Next task, I will have to do calibration of the burn-in machine and make sure that it's able to take the burn-in process for our, for our H-tube because uh, this uses higher current, roughly 30 milliamps, or this is the estimated current, 30 milliamps, and we need to make sure that our machine is able to, to do it. I will have to do a support for our carriage burner for the lathe so that it sits firmly on the carriage uh, without the risk of tipping over. Uh, next, uh, I will have to design the spring tabs that will hold the internal system against the glass. And then the following week from 20 to 26th, uh, we will do assembly of the PCBs, uh, we will order the high voltage power supply. We should also receive the 0.2 millimeter steel, so we will take it for the laser cutting. Uh, then, uh, because the previous week we received the slave PCBs and uh, we made sure that they work, we will have the final design and we will be able to order the full batch of the slave PCBs, 150 PCs. Next, uh, this week we will have the stems ready. Katka is already working on the stems, so we will have all the batch for whole project manufactured and we will be able to start uh, gluing of these stems to the ceramic tubes. I will have to make a set of the jigs for gluing the 
stems to the ceramic tubes. Once we have the stems, we will be able to glue them to the ceramic rods. So we know that our jig is already working for this. This week we will be also manufacturing full batch of the uh, stem support parts. And because we will use some 3D printed parts together with the stem to be mounted on the, on the wall, uh, we need to print them. And in the following weeks we will receive the glass and we will receive also the ceramic wire, which is last part for the internal system. And once we have this, we'll be able to finish the glass work and continue on the, on the manufacture of the tubes. So uh, end of the August and whole September is planned for manufacture of the tubes. End of the September will be testing of the tubes, testing them together with the electronics and shipping and packaging and then finally at the beginning of october flight and installation at the at the final place